Captain Marvel 5. Captain Marvel feels fresh down there. I actually forgot about this uh, comic. I um, reviewed the first four issues. I assumed it would be canceled. Um, I was surprised, very surprised when they decided to make a fifth issue. I don't know what the sales numbers are um, because they've got to be low. God, they've got to be low. Um, Captain Marvel 5 is written by people who have heard of comic books, but they never bought them. They flipped through a few as kids. Maybe they read a few issues of Strawberry Shortcake or the Smurfs or whatever. It's written by really bad writers who don't know how to elevate women without putting men down. Everything feels artificial. You don't care about the characters because they are SJWs. Even SJWs don't care about SJWs. If you don't believe me, look at the comic sales. Is Captain Marvel flying off the shelves? Of course not. The film made a billion dollars and the book is absolute donkey huevos. I know donkeys don't have huevos, I'm trying not to swear. A kid reading this would ask, why don't the characters look like women? Why does the man look like a woman? Why is everyone so ugly? Why is everything so easy for the women? Why do they talk like that? Uh, without swearing, how do they talk? I want to say that I guess they talk like a-holes. It's not quite strong enough, but that's all I can say here. Uh, why the constant affirmations? It's like a 22-page tampon commercial. The creators of the book have zero passion for it. It's strictly paint by the numbers. They know they need a lot of open mouths, shouting commands, and lasers firing non-stops. Just constant stormtrooper levels of flashing lights that don't hit anyone. They're trying to tell a story about the father and son, but the son is a lesbian with the mental illness haircut who acts like a total Nancy boy. The symbolism of him on his knees with Captain Gender Studies standing over him actually hurts to watch. I guarantee that everybody working on this book is drinking soy. The chick firing her laser without looking to complain about that is just rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. This whole book is an absolute cluster mess. Uh, the dialogue. Oh my gosh. The dialogue sounds like two people trying to out-cool each other. Speaking of being cool, the dialogue reminds me of the guy who wrote Be Cool and Get Shorty. Uh, I think his name was Elmore Leonard. He he wrote cool dialogue su su successfully because he was a good writer who had a lot of practice. These people write that cool dialogue very, very poorly because they're bad writers. Uh, they're grinding an axe. Um, they don't have a lot of practice. I, I don't know. It, it just doesn't flow right. It's, um, all the characters, oh gosh, look at that. That is your lead character. With mental illness haircut. Uh, I, I know the artist wishes they could draw them the way they want to draw them. Uh, anyway, everyone's overpowered. You know they're not going to fail. They're, they're so up their own back holes. Uh, women in the Marvel Universe can't fail. If they do, it's something-something patriarchy. The whole comic is like a Lifetime TV movie, but way worse. Because Lifetime actually uses beautiful women. I'm trying to convey to you that this comic doesn't matter to anyone. No, Nobody over the age of 10 is passionate about this comic. A kid might read it when nothing else is available. She actually looks cute in that, uh, that one drawing. She looks pretty good. If I was a 10-year-old kid, I would wonder why the ugly women are doing the jobs that heroic men are supposed to be doing. Usually it's big, strong men who do the fighting, because women are busy raising kids. If I was a kid, I would wonder when these young ladies were going to settle down and raise a family. Oh, this is your hero flying, or one of the heroes flying away. This this is the last image you leave us with. Seriously? That's the best you can go? Great, yeah. Grumpy, grumpy Hulk in the back. That's just cutesy wootsy. Just as cute. Just seriously, bro. That's who thinks this is a good. T well, I'll tell you who thinks this is a good idea. Um, the the lifetime can the cat people. Cat people think it's a good idea. Cat women, basically. I know that's a kind of a kind of a overused meme of the cat woman, but I really wonder about the people who write these books. I would I would love to be take a look um, at their their writing process. 
like I guarantee Lifetime is playing in the background when they write this garbage and it is it is garbage so this is going to be the sixth issue the next issue I'm shocked shocked who, who did this that is horrible dude come on I'm, I'm not sure what age group they're writing this for Okay, listen to some of this dialogue, this affirmation, just up each other's back hole. Carol, you okay? I'm great. Uh, Rogues, join the team. I like these odds. How's it going down here? I like it better with you in the mix. Me too. Come on. Come on. Uh, okay. If you write a character who's perfect in every way, why are we, why are we reading this? We Okay. When characters are written like this, perfect in every way, without any flaws, they're they're, they're two dimensional. They're not they're not multifaceted. They have have no character defects. They have no redemption arc. You know the outcome of the story because you can extrapolate these perfect characters. You're going to have a perfect ending. There's there's no reason to read the book. You can just stop reading. You know it's Captain Marvel and her. Oh, that's a guy. That's a girl. That's a girl, and that's a guy. Are you sure about that? Anyway, you know they're perfect characters. You know the outcome is going to be a perfect ending. They're not really going to have. They're not going to. They're not, not going to have any flaws. They're not going to be setbacks. They're not going to have any defeats, because if you have a female character be defeated, it's sexist. Someone. Okay, a scene like this, this is what I was talking about. The open-mouthed, they know they need the, a mouth open, and they know the wind has got to blow their hair back. And um, a girl is firing a, a very heavy laser device, one-handed, no problem. Um, firing anything one-handed is extremely difficult. Uh, ponytail girl is, with the football shoulder pads, and oh. Keep in mind, all these women are all about 5'6", 120 pounds. These are your your soldiers. Um, doing a flying kick in the air. The reason they do stuff like this is because they have flipped through comic books. And they have seen action scenes like this. You know, have lasers in the background. Uh, special effects of things, you know, blowing sky high. And people calmly talking. And they think, okay, this is what a comic book is. We need some dialogue. We need we need people so cool, calm, and relaxed that they're not they're not worried about uh, the violence in the background. You need to do more than flip through a comic book. You need to actually read them for years and decades, uh, and maybe take some notes. Uh, okay, this this lesbian looking character, and I don't mean that as an insult. I mean he he literally is drawn to look like what many lesbians look like. Carol, I... Something is happening to me. Damn, so much for breaking it to him gently. Okay, immediately the power position are... Uh, the guy is this... He's like the infant. And Captain Marvel is kind of his mother, but too cool to be his mother. I, I'm the bomb, aren't I? <laughs> That sounds different. Yeah, you are. I didn't know. I know. It's going to be okay. We're going to fix this. Relax, dude. Relax, dude. Mr. Mental on this haircut. My father, he must have done something to me. Or was I this all along? Come out of the closet, dude. We know where this this uh, commentary is going. I don't know, Carol. You have to you have to kill me before I go. Really? Really? They have to kill you? Come on. These people are... Like, she's Superman and the Hulk rolled into one. Uh, you're no threat to them. Really, nobody is a threat to them. They're uh, Mary Sue? Yeah, I think they're Mary Sue's. Okay. Standing over him. Just little little infant beta boy. Patting him on the shoulder while he is just useless, ineffectual, impotent, inept. Just a just a whiny little if uh, if she slapped him around I wouldn't be surprised 
Um, why do they both have mental, the same mental illness haircut? The shaved side of the head. That is something the comics have done uh, all, all too much. The, the mental illness haircut has really got to go. Um, I know you're trying to make the characters as unattractive as possible, but just stop for a minute. You don't need to do that. You can make them beautiful. You can make the men beautiful and heroic, and you can make the women beautiful and heroic, and they can all do amazing things, but they have to fail. You have to fail. They have to be... Someone's got to be an alcoholic. Someone's got to make a bad judgment call. Someone's got to screw up. This, firing the laser over the shoulder, because... I don't know what, because of course, she's just that cool. Why are we reading? Nobody, people want to read about conflict. People who write these comics, I know they know better than this. I know they know they're failing, but they're trapped in this. They're trapped by basically Twitter mobs of 10-year-old to 20-year-old Twitter left-wing Lord of the Flies kids who have way too much power on their cell phones to get these people fired. So they end up writing this stuff. And guess what? Nobody nobody buys it. What what I'm gonna go look up the sales. I'll put the link in the description. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's absolute garbage. So they have these uh these these super cool dialogue of we're not we're, we're totally calm, we're not stressed whatsoever. You're not stressed because you're not in any danger. If you're not in any danger, I don't care about the characters. You, you, it's like um, it's like trying to care about uh, non-human characters in films. It's very difficult to get someone to empathize with, with someone who's never in any danger. And these characters, do you think anything is going to happen to them? Are they going to are they going to get hurt? No, of course not. They can't get hurt. It actually looks like, I thought it was a laser at first, but it looks like a, a pistol grip uh, pump shotgun. Except it looks like a 12 gauge um, tubular magazine. Except that looks like a, a rifle casing. Um, I mean, but the people who write these things, they have they, they don't bother doing any research. It could be a laser. It could be a 12 gauge. It could be a 223. They don't care. They don't care at all. Um, some of the dialogue. Uh, some meat rogue. She's a real pain, but she's also about to come in very handy because, of course, she's perfect. I don't have to tell you not to kill him, right? Ah, not my first rodeo, Carol. Come on, that kind of dialogue it shouldn't get past the editor. It shouldn't get past the writer. You should write that. You should stop. You should just cross it out. Move on to normal, normal dialogue and just stop being so up your own rear end. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think.